If you hate the heavy customization of your Android OEM provider or if you are still waiting to get the latest Android software update then stop waiting and depending on your current OEM. The best is to switch to the another ROM. Try the latest Lineage OS ROM 14.1 based on the Android Nougat 7.1.2 with the latest August security patch. So we are going to see today the top 25 features of the Lineage OS running on the OnePlus 5 and this is available for most of the common devices but features may vary from device to device based on the hardware of the phone. So guys, let's get started. Lineage OS comes with the default Pixel Launcher as you can see here, the Pixel and this uh, Lineage OS both running the same set of software but now we have the Android Ori available which has other new features compared to the old uh, Pixel Launcher but anyways, so whenever you will get this Lineage OS 15 for the latest nightly versions, so you are going to get this all the latest Pixel Launcher feature but still it is has same swipe up drawer, Google Launch Swipe and the same Pixel Widget Bar and other features like the app shortcuts so everything just works same as the Pixel Launcher. Since you need to install the G apps after installing the Lineage OS, so you do have options to check the default and select default stock applications. So, whatever applications come with the Nexus and the Pixel phones by default, you are going to get the same version, the same Google Tiler, same Google Contact Messaging, everything is just same. Lineage OS also comes with a default stock Google Camera. So, it is pretty much same. The only difference is that you are not going to get this HDR feature, which is still exclusive to the Google Nexus and the Pixel phone. Other than that, you have all the same options. Lineage OS comes with so many gestures built on it so there is a details section here once you go inside you can see there are touch screen gestures jump to the camera using the power button double tap to the sleeve going further you can see there are so many cool things you can draw for example you can just draw this uh, figure to open the camera navigation music bar and you can also configure it for example if I just draw M here if I just do it here so this is O if I just draw O it will launch to the flashlight if I just draw S it should launch the camera pretty much very quickly. If you want to lock your phone without using any key combination, you can just enable this double tap to sleep on the status bar. Once I enable this, I can just uh, click here. It will just double tap and lock. One of the best features I like here, you can see you can disable the haptic feedback. So a quick example, as you can see, there is no haptic feedback present when I'm locking and unlocking. The usual way it is there in most of the Android manufacturer. Whenever you use your fingerprint sensor, this will simply give you haptic feedback which is pretty very annoying but here you can completely disable all the haptic feedbacks. The stock Android comes with a feature called as a night light which is simply a basic blue light filter but here there is a further section you can see now it has a display mode which you just go inside you do have options to select based on night and day or off. I just selected automatic there are some color temperature options you can just configure that. You can also do the color calibration so, so many customization options for your display. Lineage OS gives you flexibility to rotate the screen as usual but along with that you can also rotate your lock screen too and as you can see if I click on my power button my screen content also rotated if I just unlock I'm gonna go to the same place lock me again here is the one rotated lock screen click back it's okay one of the quick way to check the notification is by double tapping to wake the phone you can just click here and you can see notifications the Lineage OS also does support the same if I just double tap here it will simply wake your screen. You can just check your notification without even unlocking the device. Just click here back. It will go. Simply click on the status bar. It will lock your screen back as we have seen previously. There is another very good feature called as an expanded desktop. What it does, once you enable it for any specific application or for the, all the application, it will just uh, hide the status bar and you can just enjoy the complete experience. If I just open any application here, so you can see status bar is always by default visible. If I just go here and click it, expanded desktop turn on for all the application once i open the play store you can see i have the status bar gone and it looks pretty cool on the big amazing experience so the more bigger screen you have the better you can enjoy it if i go back i have the status bar back there is a new feature called as a quick pull down so what it does if i just go inside there are three options you can either completely turn off or you can make it right or left so right here you can just notice for example, I have just selected as a left. So if I just try to pull down for the right side, you can see it will just show me the quick toggles. Now, if I just do it from here, it will completely show me the notification panel expanded. So from this side, just a small quick toggles. If I do from here, it will completely show. Me. If I just turn off, so there is nothing. It will show you as a default that it comes. There is a further security enhancement for all the application. Once you open any application, it will show you a privacy guard notification. So what it does actually, once you go inside. It will show you all the possible permissions that are being asked from that application. You can do it, control it, you can run in the background, start at the boot, modify system setting. The same place you can control most of the application settings that can modify your Android device. I hope you guys still remember by looking on this phone 
there was a feature in the symbionite call as a profile so that was silent outdoor and meeting so so many things were there the similar thing is same feature is also here so there are three profiles here so once you for example go inside the default here you can see you can con control many of the things for example wi-fi bluetooth nfc which should be turned on by default and all the wireless and network information going back you can select as an automatic schedule based on the locations and the time activity it will control and make sure you know so many activities profiles ringers node notification everything can be just changed just based on the one shot if you are listening a lot of music uh, then there is a good feature for you there is a launch music player option so once you insert this headphone jack on it if you just turn that feature on i'm just going to plug in my headphone so it will ask me to launch the default music player if i just select google play so each time i will you know insert my headphone jack it's gonna take me this default of the music player by itself you can see it just launched by itself i go back and try again here's the one you can view the memory consumption by all the application in much a detailed way for example if you just go inside the settings memory there is a section called as a memory use by application so once you click here you you'd have options to sort by max usage so you can see which of the application is consuming a lot of the battery and you can see here i haven't launched the google chrome here yet so it's taking 574 megabytes on the background twitter is taking a lot of memory so if that application is not for your need you can simply just disable uninstall and can do a lot of activities from here even further you do have options to select what are the application are going to launch on the boot so you can just configure and check it you can also configure the system applications the built-in applications every application you can configure and so you can just select what are the applications are going to launch on the boot they are very less manufactured which give options to customize the you know this backlight in case your phone supports the hardware keys so definitely there should be some kind of light here for example if i just turn on here i should see a blue light here you can see there's a blue light glowing so by default you cannot control it in most of the manufacturers but here you can control it you do have options to control the brightness intensity for how many times you want the illuminations to be turned on so which is again pretty great feature you can customize the power button in much a detailed way so the default function is there you can in the call you can long press for the torch or if you just go inside the power menu you do have options to you know add the screenshot feature airplane mode sound panel so if you just long press here you can pretty much take a screenshot airplane mode so many things you can do from here LineageWise gives you flexibility to individually lock your SIM card. In case you have dual SIM card support, you can just go inside and can lock the SIM based on the pin and pattern that you want. There are so many screen lock configuration options available. Once you go inside the security, just click on this gear icon. Going inside, you can see you have this uh, power button instantly locks, lock screen message, lock screen shortcut you can customize from here. And along with that, you do have options to show whether blur the background and you double tap to sleep anywhere features. So just to give you guys a quick demo, if I just uh, click here, lock again. So if I just press the power button, you can see uh, the background is kind of blurry. If I just double tap here, I will sleep again. Double tap to unlock here. Most phones nowadays come with the alert slider. So there is a good options to customize them also. Right here, you can see top positions. Just you can set for the alarm, middle position, bottom position. Uh, also, you can just control like swipe buttons. You can just control the recent back and front buttons. So, so many options are there to control your notification sliders. You can configure the status bar in a much detailed way. There is a separate individual entry here. Once you go inside status bar, you can see quick pull off. You've already seen system icons are there. You can control whatever icons are being displayed there. Along with that, you do have options to display AM and PM. You can see by default PM is shown. So I've just selected. You can change the battery circle options, icon, landscape. You can see it is by default old Android KitKat option. And the brightness slider also. You can see if I just click here, it will increase the brightness and you can control the brightness intensity from here also, which is again very nice feature. Auto brightness feature is already there. So you can just increase the brightness from here. I'm going to use a quick gestures features on two ROMs here. So this is Lineage OS, this is Oxygen OS. So here is the shortcut should be V. So right here you can see flashlight is turned on. The same I can do from by drawing M here. So now once I just go and unlock the both of the phones, you can see on the Lineage OS, it is giving me a constant display notification like torch is turned on while here it is not. So either I will swipe down here so to turn that off, but you can quickly turn off from here. On the lineage OS, you can control the vibration intensity also. Once you inside the setting, you can just click here. You can see, you can just make it to, you know, uh, this, if you just turn that on. So you're going to get this feedback once you unlock your device also. If you just make a zero, you're not going to get any haptic feedback once even you unlock your device. 
so guys these are all the such a features now in, in performance is really very important also so as of now you can see i have just installed uh, this uh, youtube uh, youtube is coming by default i have installed twitter and to do gig benchmark and studio only five application i have installed so there is nothing at all is completely clean and this is oneplus 5 snapdragon 835 8 gigabytes of ram i'm just going to compare the performance with the snapdragon 821 oneplus 3d 6 gigabytes of RAM. So I'm just going to lock my phone in both places. So now I take a look here and see which phone does unlock faster. I'm going to use since both the devices use the same thing. I've been, you know, hardware. So 3, 2, 1. You can see there is a delay in locking and unlocking. Trying again. See. It's taking a bit of time. So that kind of performance is kind of, uh, you know, it's not good. I feel, uh, see, you know, it looks to me both. You know powerful here so if i just go and lock the this is here on this condition so here animation is same so trying again so still it is slightly delayed now let's try out for locking the phone you can see this one uh, turns off faster the older device less pro less ram and you know the oxygen is so give it a try again so still I can say the performance is not great. So the same you can check by looking on this uh, scores here. So my usual benchmarking score for the n or the OnePlus 5 here is always greater than 175k. And yesterday I just got 179k with the latest port at 5.10. Comparing the Geek benchmark here. This is again very less compared to the what I had with the official ones. So uh, this will actually prove that you know we have seen the live demo or the performance is slight bit of delay is there you know even the you know opening application and minimizing that takes a bit of time you can see there's a little bit of admission delay so certainly performance is not great compared to the other roms here so now like guys let's talk about the battery so yeah uh, this phone supports a dash charging even though when you charge it it won't show you like dash charging enabled but yeah it is charging very fast so there's no problem with that and device is slightly heated up as usual so there is no complaint of the battery Regarding the battery backup, it's okay. I'm using it from the morning. So I just charge it once. So uh, it's fine. Let me show you here how the battery stats goes on. So this is the battery here on the screen on time. So I just use for almost uh, three hours near to that. You can see with the 50% battery almost drained out. So I will say five plus battery hours, you will get that. So guys, there it is. This is your Lineage OS review the features performance whether you should use or not so depends on your personal preference in case you're using such older devices which are not going to get any software update very soon so definitely it's a good choice other than that in case you're using any latest devices which does have all the latest android nougat updated stall so definitely use those around that are very good so guys that's been it for this lineage 14.1 nightly official thank you so much for watching enjoy your rom this is sarab i'll talk to you very soon